God's servant always carry an edge. What the edge? They carry the fire. They carry the sword. They carry the rod. That's the edge. He said, "If anyone in the world that everybody praise him, he's in huge trouble before God." And be aware, man want to garner man's praise or quit the land as a praise without much thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. Making sense to you? Amen. Hallelujah. You want to praise somebody? You really feel about it? You really know what you're talking about? And do not hold back your praise. Don't you have hold you back your 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 compliments. Speak out of your heart. I do not change all the day. Today is good. Tomorrow is bad. Tomorrow is today is God. Tomorrow is not God. You don't feel like a God. Make up your mind. You are shifting shadows. Amen. You are, nobody can trust your word. But every man of God is a man of his word, not of his foolish word, his own counsel. Am I saying his solid word? His word means word come out the bottom of his heart in identification and agreement with God's counsel, God's approval. I mean it. That when I see something in the name of the Lord, that's that. No. To be authority, but a commitment. Be faithful, no flippant. You know Isaiah came to the Lord. What is the Lord? What is the godly man overwhelmed before the amazing Lord? Before the throne, when he said, he fell like a dead man. Right? He suddenly recognized his lips. What? He has what? Unclean lips. Is he coming to the house? Sure, everybody talk to God. He talked about it all his life, obviously. And it was good man. That's why God granted access to that wonderful vacation, uh, visitation. And I also entrusted him for the most sublime, beautiful prophecy of our Lord in the ages, in the days to come. Am I right? So he's a very valuable, very wonderful, God-loving person. Then on this occasion, in his dismay, was I his king? You know, his his the kingdom this totally thunder, the earthquake that shook the whole nation, shook the temple, shook the palace. In those old days, when things that the nature shaking the earthquake, will everything oh well, God is in wrath. These people have a problem with God, and if you are prophet, you are prince, you are prince, which Isaiah was all. That you have a holy duty to intercede. What、oh, God? What are you going on? What are you trying to do now? Why we invoke you to rest? Why you put us in shame? What's going on? What a sin we had, and it was considered as worthy to be called forth to stand before God and plead his case. But when he was there, he tried to place for. Please, the case for the people. That's no case to play. He suddenly recognized he was one of the many that are people totally unclean before the Holy God. When we talk about unclean lips, that means their counsel, their thinking, their mindset, their way of life is totally rejected by God. The white God said, "Let me shake you up a little bit." Let me show you. I'm not pleased with you. I'm having problems with you. And suddenly, Isaiah said, "Oh, oh, oh. I'm part of the problem. I'm no kiss to play." What he did? He was on down. You know what a、uh, down means? Not because you can be silent when. What a mirror down is your heart totally melt. 
you know, we go through certain things in life, which is it's like the ground is the fall upon us, am I right? Which is really in the free fall, am I right? And as if there is a base, a boat, blah, 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 you get in the water, you know, fall, fall, fall. Because there's nothing for you to stand on. There's nothing for you to justify. There's nothing for you to say you have a, a reason to make a case, to make a stand, to, oh God, I deserve something. Am I? You know, you should be rejected. You should have no mercy and compassion from God. That's conviction. Conviction, no point. I don't deserve anything. You know where our foolish thinking comes from? I deserve something. God should treat me this way. I learned something. But God never that. You put up with that. He's a patient father. You understand our futile thinking, but he, he never agreed with that. He said, that's, that's a foolishness to me. I will never prove that. I will never move myself on your behalf because of the foolishness. Your darkness has nothing to do with it. And Isaiah come to that place, he totally unknown. Then the angel had the police lips, am I? What happened? What have you? The call, am I? Speaking my clean lips. So what is our life problem? We said, I'm not complacent. I know I am. <laughs> On the daily face. I want to be holy. No, you don't. Look how you conduct your life. Look what you're talking about on the basis. Look how you receive others who carry the wisdom, carry the, the will of the Lord. You know this. Are you supposed to talk about God with them? Are you passionate? Or you want to talk about your idea about God? He even has come to Jesus in the middle of the night and said, let's have a talk about the God. And what does Jesus say? No, Nidemus. You know nothing about the God I'm talking about. That's where we're humility. But that's our Lord. He cut off his ground. He cut off his legs. That's disrespectful. That's not kind. That's not civilized. That's blunt. Well, if you're talking about is this is a lamb chop, is good or not, well I have a lot of patience with you. <laughs> but you're not talking about that, am I right? You talk with me about who? About God. It's not like a lamb chop. It's not like a dirt, it's not a tree. You talk about my God. And you want to fellowship with me about this God that I serve. My father. So master yourself then. Consider what you are talking about. I'm not trying to harsh on you. I'm just saying, be wise. People touch my skin, hurt my skin. That's fine. I don't blame you. You blame me. Oh, no. You chop my arms off. Oh, it's okay, my friend. You made a mistake. You treat me like and you color my life. Oh, it's okay, you know. Tomorrow you changed. I can still be your friend. No wonder. I just lost arm. That doesn't matter. <laughs> But when you try to gauge my brain out, try to poison my heart, Amen, Hallelujah. Try to put women in my blood, I will put it on. (laughs) 
Amen. At least I will show it. We saw some miles we were never, never close to me. <laughs> you know, my friend, you're my desperate enemy. I will chase you down, actually. <laughs> because you are harm to anybody. You're evil. You're harmful. I'll crush you. I can limit you. So you don't do harm to people. Amen? Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's our God. If a man becomes a source or seed of evil, do you think righteous am I supposed to put up with that? And so nothing exists. What did we say? I hate those who hate you. I, I, I passion, he's passionate about it. Huh? We're care, careful to listen to me this on this. In many occasions, God is going to put us in the midst of uh, all opposition. Many voices, many voices, or many wrong opinions. Maybe not about you, you know. But a mentor, mentor to God's people, mentor the name of the Lord, mentors to who God is, what it, the well-being, the whole God's purpose for His people. And you here, maybe it's not about you. Actually, maybe it's about you. Uh, eventually, something will impact you, right? So you know, so. But it's it's about God's people. It's about God's purpose. I mean, they still say, like a Jeremiah situation, right? Say, oh, this is what I want to do. This is what I have to do. This is what we should do. And you become a soul and lonely voice. No, you guys are lying. You don't hear God, right? You don't interest in people. You don't interest in God. You are liars. I'm not going to sit here and be quiet. I will put every one of you down. You threw me in a dungeon. You kill me. You cast me out. So be it. But I will tell you, you are wrong about the God. Therefore, you are my enemies. I will never have peace with you. I want you to read the psalm right now. I'm sorry, we're in the, in the spirit. Psalm 101. Do not be afraid. The intensity and the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead. Read aloud. Don't worry about it. Let the whole world heard. Let the angels hear. It. Let God be pleased. Go ahead. Amen. I will sing of your love and justice. To you, Lord, I will sing praise. I will be careful to lead a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will conduct the affairs of my house with a blameless heart. I will not look with approval on anything that is vile. I hate what faithless people do. I will have no part in it. The perverse of heart shall be far from me. So what do you identify that he's going to have no peace with, no part in their life? Faithless people. You don't receive kingly wisdom, God responsibilities, you're going to be want to move in his grace, his entrustment. That's something you have to do. Simple. And by the way, it's not because of your entrustment. It's because you love God, you understand God, you're passionate about God. Actually, without such a heart, such a standing, there's no entrustment for it to begin with. It will never come to you. You're self-assigned, self-subscribed.
How many really know God? Not many. They know God is a caretaker, helper, great comforter. How many really know God himself? We can theorize. Who, um, how many know the opinion of God? Not in every matter, but in the principle of things. Here, David tell you. No. This is who my God is, and this is who I'm going to be a man on earth that has his counsel and his life. This is who he is. This is how he does it. His affairs. Man, it's okay, his affairs. Therefore, here I stand. In righteous justice, in godliness, yes, I sin, yes, I promise. But at the end of the day, this whole land is going to talk about my affairs for the entrustment that he gave to me. Uh, be a good shepherd for his people. And it's for this reason I'm set aside. And for these things I seek God, that I finally know him. Now, actually, if you don't commit yourself, to this way of life. You never know God. He will never disclose His true nature to you, His true wisdom to you. Am I right? That's the truth. That's the truth. God, the f- real entrustment, is His way. Hear me out, Noah. Is the way. The way is, wow, what is that? What do you mean? <laughs> Not that. We. What do you mean? Not tomorrow he's going to do this. Look, this holy, this glorious. No, no, those. No, we. <laughs> Judgment. Discernment. Counsel. Everywhere. Over everything. The beginning and the end, everything. Am I right? And you entrust with the ways. So you have David, the thing about the Paul. But we have what? The mind, the ways, the counsel of God as human beings. Am I right? We only think that Jesus is the one who has the fullest ways. But the devil in the Old Testament the rise up to the things. No. This is the will of the Lord and will live in such. Does it have to do with the responsibility, his anointing, his calling? Yeah, those can be considered and many Christians with shiny words, glamorous notions, try to get a hold of God. And God laugh at them, your babies. Wanderers, beggars. But my son know my way. He delighted in the fear of the Lord. He never terrified me. He delighted. Look how wonderful God will of the Lord is. And it's so wonderful, so good. Therefore, I'm going to go about my life in every affairs, in every sphere, in every occasion. To apply his way. And the cost. I might be the one that single I'll be rejected and killed. <laughs> Not because of a prophetic message, a rebuke. Because I want to live in the way of the Lord. And that's amazing, huh? We're hard. More hard to even know about it. Much harder to walk it out. But God's grace is that He forgives us. So when we delight in His ways, we want to practice His ways. What have you? Well, He He come on, <laughs> He come on your side. Always, always caring, always able. Amen. He is never. He always forgives. He always have a. Remedy, am I for our mistakes? Am I? Hallelujah. <laughs> but uh, on my side, I mean, uh, one condition you won't walk in His ways. 
Condition, people say. God on condition level heard many, many people go cheaply, cheaply, cheaply. What a human invention. God love and is holy. Never departed. His way is different than man's ways. So, would it because his love going to change his ways towards you? Are you so special now? Or should it be the opposite? That's why he's gone. That you, if you love him, I want to be in his love, know, the way, know his love. And then plan your life in his love, flow full of his love. Should not you delight in the will of the Lord? Learn his way? Because they never depart from one another. Now, let me ask you something else. If I'm carrying out the will of the Lord, who can tell me I'm not love as God love? Who can tell me that I'm not loving you? That's very interesting, am I? That's why in the Bible, the Bible said, you plead the Father to use the Father to prove His Son. Why? Because the response of the Son is amazing. <laughs> it's not saying. Mother said, oh, sorry, Dad. <laughs> oh, I deserve this. He's taking the beating. He's suffering. He's maybe in shame, maybe in whatever. But you know what? Wrap up, getting healed. What matter? He said, Yes. Father, you're righteous. And thank you for cracking me, cracking me from my own follies so I can walk in the manifest and light your righteousness. Thank you. Don't let me fall into my own deceit, my own schemes, my own mechanisms. You know, the devil's calculation, the devil's time says, Thank you, thank you, thank you for beating me back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much because I know my foolishness. I know how the devil is intricate, you know, and he's powerful. But you love me enough. To give me a beating. <laughs> so I can walk in your way. I don't want to suffer like others suffer in the head of the devil. I don't have to suffer the ongoing consequences that my relationship with you is impaired. <laughs> but I know. Tomorrow will be the day you're full of compassion now. You, you will never scorn me. You never look at me as if I'm not your son. As if, oh, I'm going to remember this forever. <laughs> no, as you have disciplined me, now my attitude is crazy. You have the next thing remembered. <laughs> All my sins are blotted away. Amen? Hallelujah. But I'm a different man now than I used to. So thank you for the being. I always thank you, God, for his question. Try to at least. For the question is good for me. I know my strong tendencies, my strong will. Finish. <clears throat> Whoever slanders their neighbor in secret, I will put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, I will not tolerate. My eyes will be on the faithful in the land. So on the faithful, he depart. On the faithful, what are you going to do? He devoted himself. Wow. You're not loving people. You're divisive. You're controlling. You try to play God. (laughs) 
Yes, such a people want to say, I want to know God. I want to do things, God. <laughs> I want to represent God. God, use me. God, do great things with me. Candy, do you want to have the fundamentals of God? First, His way, His nature. Second, why He use you? For the reason He want to use you. For the purpose, to what end? He what kind of justice, what kind of righteousness, what kind of result? Continue. That they may dwell with me. The one whose walk is blameless will minister to me. No one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Every morning I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. I will cut off every evildoer from the city of the Lord. So he's leaving them alone? Understand. Common sense people will say, that's too hard, that's not what God wants. No one to do that. What about David? What about Jesus? <laughs> he never pronounced the wow. He never declared judgment. Are you killing me? Amen. He is the one come out with a rod. <laughs> And the Bible said, you know, trample, he will, his, his, his garment is going to stain with the blood from the trampling the wicked, the dead, him, right? We have shed the blood in us, and now it's the time for their to shed the blood, to redeem this creation. They have to pay the price, stop. The reckoning is on you now. And people said, that's harsh. That's unkind. That's not love. <laughs> oh, foolish. Are you God? Why not fear and tremble and turn to do right? Maybe you can be saved. Maybe you can even be glorified, used, established, wonderful thing for the Lord. No, you are content. No, that's impossible for God. No, no, we can do that. No, neighbors, you can still do that. God will not that harsh on you. Your future is good, secure. So what kind of culture you got? What kind of God you got? God you're making? God serve man? Serve your own wings? What kind of messenger you are? Perversion? Misrepresentation? By the way, unrighteous! You who do evil and command us to do evil. And think there are no consequences. You're your judge now. And it's a rampant, popular among Christians today. Now, what is our call? I- I'm sorry to be strong. Our call is to be different. <laughs> to walk away from this foolishness. To be a new people. Our people are truly committed. And know the will of the Lord. Able to go about this business. Am I right? That's our call. So this is not small man. Finish that. So, yeah. You finish? Okay. I want to share your vision and pray for us. It's not small man to know what I share with you. No when Jeremiah was a young boy. I was 12, some years old. God visited him and said, Jeremiah, before you were born, I know you. 
Am I? Hallelujah. Then he struck. I'm as a young man. I don't know, brother. This is too hard. No, God said, I will show you wonderful thing. Yeah, no, no. But in the end, he said, no, do not be afraid of them. <laughs> you f- be a fortified wall for them. You know what a fortified wall is? People attack them, right? You fortify the wall. They come in. They're trying to steal in the city, am I? Batting on the door. The gate, I'm sorry, trying to kill. Am I? Right? So, have you seen war games in you know, Asian time? What happened? The attack of war, am I? So you fortify the war. Today we said iron curtain. <laughs> yeah, that's a cot. <laughs> Share with me with uh, with me the vision. I saw two visions. The first one I saw, a just a person. I didn't know if it was a man or a woman. Uh, just was, he, he was jumping on the on a trampoline. What a trampoline! It's those big uh, oh, pads that people yeah, jump yeah. up and down oh, yeah, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, it collapsed underneath the person. Completely, mm. while he was jumping on it, and it opened up, and the, so the support that the trampoline had been giving us, giving him over and over again, just collapsed, and he fell to the ground. Mm. So that's what I saw in the first vision, mm. and the second one. Let me ask you, what do you think he implied? I I know it's not a, a positive thing. I know it's the the trampoline you sh- is significant significant or signifies uh, basically playfulness and childishness as it is something that uh, children play on and it's yeah. it's for enjoyment mm-hmm. not anything productive particularly mm-hmm. and uh, the person was putting the trust of his own body to this object that ended up eventually collapsing on him and he sure. injured himself I see. Mm-hmm. because that which he was playing on and was trusting yeah. collapsed on him Yes. Um, I think that's significant of um, a careless way, mindless yes. way, an immature life. way of life. Yeah, yes. mindless. Mm. Now, most of the people in life, well, Christians, especially Christians, actually sometimes mindless. No that's, better than other people in yeah. the world. It's almost undecisive way of being up and being down, being up, never having a stable place of stability, never and eventually collapses. Walk. No one walks over there. Mm. Go ahead. And then I also saw a vision of a very interesting image. I saw just the image of like an elephant head over a fireplace. Mm. So just a very massive head of an elephant uh, positioned directly with its tusks and everything over a fireplace. Mm. Almost mm. like the wind of a or the prize of a hunter mm. that had maybe uh, caught or killed the elephant. And oh, wow. That's mm. something hunters often do is they take the head of the animal sure. and position it and hang it on the wall. Mm. And this elephant head was positioned um, perfectly in the center above this fireplace. Is an elephant uh, is a party symbol in America or not? What a kind of party? I think there's an elephant represents something, right? I'm not sure. sure. In, Republican, uh, Republican, yeah. Republican? Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Those were, those were the two things I saw. No, I want you to close that. I will see another reason right now. <laughs> That's much you already earned before the discourse I had recently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you. Lord, I ask you to bless me. It's time for him to, to be settled, to be deep rooted, and grow to be a mighty, wonderful, strong tree. Lord, I picture as I have as a redwood, you know, redwood, the most mild tree in the world. And I pray, Lord, you grow in good stature. And take advantage of this beautiful season of life. 
and never limit his capacity. Not in talents, gifts, or experience of life, but the capacity is a spiritual man. The capacity to, to understand and walk in your wisdom. That capacity is immense, a gifted to him. What I pray that will be now come about its full potential. The season you assign, the grace that you made available for the blossom. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, you will see heavenly things. I pray for that. You will see. Thing that uh, put into your future as well, Lord. Thank you for that. And you will see what the God doing this day, this hour, uh, in the midst of the people as well. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let it be released. Let this word to the hearing ear, the believing heart, have an impact. Would change, at least deliver them from the shallow superficiality of certain ways of life, certain ways of thinking. Lord. But I've all Lord, I bring true repentance, true holiness, true growth. In the name of Jesus, those have a year to hear, have a delight, where you are the consuming fire, Lord. You are not the place. saw a vision that had briefly uh, seen earlier but then came in more clarity again it was a vision <clears throat> that I instantly had an impression of as to what it meant but um, basically just seeing this simple image of myself going up to a spring of water that was coming forth from the ground mm. and continually filling my cup and leaving over and over again mm. to the spring mm. and as to what it had to offer. Mm. And then uh, I almost felt an anger with like an indignation or anger with myself and that vision as to what I was doing. Not what, it, not that what I was doing was wrong, mm. but that it was, it was, had a really intent like a selfishness to it mm. and the after this anger almost took place explain to me the selfish to it, what that means just that I was coming to this stream to fill my own cup oh. over and over again mm. and after and then the anger I felt towards myself in this particular scene or image almost in itself changed or shifted and molded the vision mm. to where I had implanted myself and almost was the fountain, the fountain itself. Yes. I was the stream. Yes. I was no longer coming to fill my own cup over yes. and over again. Mm. I was the stream. Mm -hmm. um, of course, that was a drastic change between both. Yes. And uh, I felt uh, with even within my own heart that there is needing to be a shift from like even for instance times that we have like these are not a time to come be mentally or spiritually refreshed for another successful week that's I mean that's that's not something I voluntarily thought within my mind particularly but that's foolishness mm -hmm. this this is far beyond my own self it's like you've mentioned several times it's it concerns God's culture and his people yes. and is is much greater and immense than the insignificance of my own life yes and I don't feel strange about it and Abraham know who he was when he raised up a son he know who that son is Ishmael had done. Now, Isaiah, 
is on my children. Devi. And that was himself brought up in that way, in contrast with the soul and many other things, right? So, but he know he was chosen from a very, very different purpose. And that's common Christianity that it gives us false presumption that everybody knows, everybody thinks they're special. I'm chosen, I'm called, I'm big heart believer because I have this experience and experience. And when you understand God operating in his reality, you really know who is called, who is chosen. That has nothing to do with you. Let me explain to you something for greater audience purposes. When God said he will show this, he wants to show mercy, show compassion, it's nothing to do with the judging merely of the Jews or the Gentiles in that kind of light, right? Paul was talking about, more about the chosen ones. A human contention continues to argue with God. God, you can't do that. You can't make someone special. <laughs> Look at the Bible. He made God's chosen people special people. <laughs> Peculiar, peculiar people. You, if you don't understand the peculiarity about you, you think it's another head of the human existence. You're desperately wrong. It is not choosing you because it's one to give you a beautiful feature. Either he chose you, choose. Amen. I'm not saying call, okay? For a world, world, particular purpose. And you don't know that? You try to generalize through your theology, through your experience of the Bible? You never know it. It has to be very personal to you. By the way, to reveal to you, it's a simple. Everybody's supposed to know. You don't know it because you never asked. You believe in your theology. Because you believe in your own mind about the Bible or whatever you learned from your human tradition. You look at the Bible. Look at uh, the things about those who are used by God. Do you see that? They are unclear why they were chosen? Well, everybody knows they are chosen. Without a, a mistake. <laughs> a simple fact. A God will not use anyone in the blurry. <laughs> Is he not a clear God? We don't ask. Never seek about it. Only trouble comes, only desperation comes, and we, okay, God help me. He saved you. But you never ask your destiny. Why are you a hero? What has God made you to be? You never asked. You don't even care about that at the end of the day. Because anybody really care about it, you will ask. <laughs> no. This is another weird difficulty for if you know what he called for, you're chosen for no purpose. You would think that's wonderful. And that's going to come to a true reality for you. Chosen me, mistake. The word tried Joseph or tested Joseph. What that means? The calling is given. But Joseph was not up to it yet. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. And test you. You have to be proved you're capable. You're worthy. God said, okay, I'll create you as righteous. I'll prove you. Then we talk about our business. This is two things. Popular Christian never get a hold of it. Generalize, popularize, whatever. Motivating speaking, self help sermons. You understand know, my point? Then I ask. Therefore, people like you and me, or others, come along and say, I know I'm called. I know what I'm doing. You in the blur, you in your speculation, doesn't change a single bit what I got given to me. And 
And I know why you're flimsy, jumping back and down, you know. You never walk with God as yet. To stop your speculation and jumping. <laughs> then we talk about something else. Make sense here? I'm the same. Then something else happened. And those who call, know their truth, and they will conduct their business life, their relationship, in a prescribed way. I mean, not in a script way, in a sense. I'm not talking about God will tell them what to do. Amen? Hallelujah. Making sense to you? The Holy Spirit will do that. To the speculation. And Jesus said, I know those who have God here. He didn't go out to chase everyone down. He said, okay, you got better on the side or else. <laughs> but with the 11, one of which he knows will not be wholeheartedly in obeying and understanding and right so what, what did Jesus do did Jesus have said but we have this philosophy said okay Jesus means every believer and Jesus when he said it many are called few are chosen what are you talking about and then those who are given to me what happened now will be lost can you use that as a philosophy to build a theory that you I always a saved, was he a saved? That's what a man did. It really works. You know, the other day we listened to this uh, conversation. I think I shared it with it. But about Billy Graham, the wonderful evangelist. You know him, right? I mean, feel the stadium on the stadium, right? Wonderful. Changed many, touched many, many people's lives. But to his simple evaluation, he said about the five percent are generally converted or what I believe. Five percent. And the genuine relationship with the Lord. After the that I believe the gospel. Is a Billy Graham a liar? He don't have this, well, I think it's a give object assessment, am I right? So, a distinction between those who are called and those who are really committed. I'm not to try to to speculate that they're doubtful their mindset. I'm only saying that. Let's give us some uh, really funky. So what that means that 5%? What marks them out? I will tell you something else. What marked them out is never use speculation to define the salvation experience. Look at this. Each one of them has to have a genuine encounter with God, an ongoing relationship walking in the will of the Lord. That's a different. Not speculation, not heresy, not generalization. I want mean, you to hold every hand and pray. I mean, do you understand my point? That's what's different about us. And you have a, you need to have a no shame to tell anyone in your life, says. Okay, this is why I am. You don't like it? Deal with it. I don't care if you like it or not. This is why I am. You got a problem with that? You have a problem with God. I'm going to walk. I'm going to talk. I'm going to conduct my life as if you never existed. Because you does. In God's calculation, you never existed. If you think like that. To me. A God going to hold you accountable. Not me. But I don't have you to write the chapter of my life. To tell me what is right or wrong. When God clearly told me, you don't confess, you don't work with that. 
This is the ground. This is the way. Walking this way. What do you think? Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> no, doesn't matter to God. You don't know what you're talking about. And by the way, when I talk to you about these things, pay attention. <laughs> For we're not talking about ourselves. We're talking about whom? If you don't develop your life in such a way, don't talk about God with me. It's not permissible. It's not helpful. Make the cup. No, I will highly wise you. If there are anything you want to say, I can say. No, I'm good thing, good attitude. Make this cup. It will spare you many heartache and troubles in life. If you are called by God and come into Him. Two conditions. Know that you are called. Then on your part, decide to commit to it. And it can cost you. Cost you what? It's a rise up to challenge and cut off and subdue all those foolish voices. That you don't know what you're talking about. I get a hold of God and God get a hold of me. You better get a hold of that reality. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not a man of the world. <laughs> Pray for us. Lord, I, re I repent, Father, Lord, from all fleshly pursuits, Lord, and mindsets, Lord, and from listening or acting upon any, Lord, outside voice or wisdom that is not, Lord, of your spirit. Lord, indeed, my heart is completely filled with thanks, Lord, and gratitude for, Lord, the strike of your rod, Lord, and Father, the correction that you offer out of love for your sons. Lord, I, within my soul, I feel, Lord, that I deserve nothing, Lord, truly nothing that you have Lord, offered to me, Father. Lord, but I accept it, Lord, with, with thanksgiving. Mm. Lord, and hope. Lord, for my life. Mm. Lord, and what you have laid before me. And Lord, like I had said earlier, Father, I, I pray that this would not just be something that I feel the pain of for an amount of time, but go and fall right back to a worldly way of thinking and acting. Mm. Lord, I pray that this, the wound of the, the piercing sword of your word, mm. Lord, would, would remain within my heart, Lord, my flesh, my soul, and my spirit, mm. and mind, Lord, for the entirety of my life. Lord, I ask, Father, that you would remain as the governor, Lord, and the leader, Lord, of all pursuits and desires of my heart. Mm. Lord, not only that, but he who places those desires within my heart. Mm. Lord, that my desires may be your desires. Lord, and in life, that I would have an anger towards that which you hate, Father. Mm. Lord, and look forward and cherish that which you love. Mm. So, Lord, I pray that this would truly become a reality within me. Mm. Lord, that it would be something that I never reject, that never leaves the forefront of my mind and heart. Mm. Lord, that it would nourish and uplift my spirit. Mm. Lord, not one day and then not the next, Father, but every day, all throughout my life. Mm. Lord, that this, this same way of life would spread to others around me. Mm. Lord, to let go of the fleshly and soulish things and grab hold mm. of the spiritual, Lord, and relational things, mm. which truly have the ultimate, Lord, importance 
and matter truly in life. Mm. So this I bless within myself in Jesus' name. Mm. And you're Amen. blessed. You're blessed with godly people, godly parents, godly siblings. Am I? I'm not coming all wrong. I'm not saying that you done anything wrong. I'm saying you are truly blessed. No. <laughs> in every aspect of your life, truly blessed. In this God, in our soul. And do not treat those things lightly. Amen. Hallelujah. Do not treat those lightly. I know in many occasions you see your, the, the joy your, and the, the pride the, the, you know, your father's heart towards, you know, meshing with me. I mean, you may have a surface of love, but he delight, pleased, where God is. Do you know that? I mean, you, you really need to know that. I mean, I'm not saying to compel you to, to accuse you here. I'm just saying, wow, what a wonderful thing to know. <laughs> if that is the content and orientation of your relation to your father, you can't get talk about anything. Do anything together. You can't think about doing things together. How to help this evening? How to help innocence my phone? What are the wonderful things? Not you have to get that out again. And he had to get that out you. Then fellowship. Then fire and the fire fuel. What a wonderful thing to do. Why? In have with our foolish struggles. Like any other man would do. And by the way, if people end to our, our life in that struggles. Well, I, we are cautious of why you be a part of my life. I don't accuse me, blame me, when you're not getting all of my life. I'm going to cook a wonderful meal. And here's most of part of the recipe. Am I the recipe I follow? I will tell you. Okay, this is the recipe. God gave the material. This is a process I'm going to do. Want to help? Thank you. You know, cut materials, prepare. Far or whatever. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> no one come around and say, Uh oh, you got the wrong recipe. Oh, you don't know how to cook. Oh, oh, yeah, well, we can talk about that, but if here we decided it's the recipe. Okay, good, good. Okay, let's start cooking. Okay, great, great. In the middle of the fire, in the middle of the everything going on, we just cooking the meal. He said, Oh, oh. We need to add this spices, we need to do this, we need to do that. What kind of food are you going to cook? And I need to eat. I'm hungry. I'm dying. Now you want to change this beautiful thing that. To, 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 to produce a wonderful meal. And I enjoy have a good time. Change it to be a, a miserable struggle. <laughs> in winter, it destroyed my whole meal. <laughs> Making me hungry. I mean, maybe you got some poison to it. Who knows? Throw some dirt in it. I can't eat the food anymore. Spoil everything. Destroy every grace. Every blessing that I give to me. Why I should have you wrong in my kitchen? If that's what you want to do, get out of here. If it's my father, that's it. <laughs> the Bible says, walk away. <laughs> because you're not born of earth. If you call. And you're not accountable. To a foolish father. Do you understand my point? Human convention can only go so far. Our responsibility in society, in tradition, man, can only go so far. When it is beginning to touch the core of our being and who God made us to be, called us to be, everything can be burned. Everything. 
Now that's not talking to you to be a rebel, okay? So this rebel or make hasty decisions, you make compulsive decisions, or excuse yourself when you're not doing right thing, am I So many people do that. It's a foolishness. But I'm not saying come the course. Make something in your life that God made it away. And it's every other thing. Can you imagine if David had a link around his own house? <laughs> Trying to be a good brother, good son, good father. What are going to happen to David? Oh, be as another friend, you know, another friend of just Jonathan, like the song is wonderful, it's beautiful, so doesn't care about whatever God is doing. What are going to happen to him? Would he be any David? He would be a good soldier, good brother, good, many wives, everybody will praise him. <laughs> but can he be a David? Amen, hallelujah. And David paid a lot of price, isn't he? A newly married wife. <laughs> Family give up. This court, I suppose, a king threw all the doors open to him. Gone, right? Because he has to carry himself in certain ways. That's a lot on a young man today. I, outside voice will tell you, you know, young man, he can't take that much. What do you know? Who told you? Aren't you speaking like a man? How about we know? How are we doing the exactly thing God wants to do? This is a moment that God's work is fulfilled. How about that? Show some respect to the work of the Lord. What I'm trying to do is to silence every voice. Put up your hand with some other words. If you think like a man, you talk like a man. But you think like a son, a cold one. Dwell upon two things. Led by the spirit of sonship. It means something. And there is a price to pay. Sometimes I'm telling people, no. You're not speaking about that. You speak out ignorance and foolishness. Maybe you speak out the devil. I will tell you that. So just be quiet, please. Tell us what you see. Just saw basically the tightening of a noose, mm-hmm. and it's what would be put around someone's neck and to hang oh, on a person. Wow! So mm-hmm. I saw the part where the rope is going through the knot to mm-hmm. tighten it, which would enclose the loop mm-hmm. around uh, the person's neck. I I never saw the person. I just saw the image of the tightening, and I saw it was to. The where the knot was itself was cut by with a dagger with a knife, mm. um, as it was going down in mid uh, tightening, it was cut. That's so what he's, I saw. He's, he's released from his his death sentence or something like that. Is that something right? like that. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. I never saw who was tightening it or the person that was being, or that was in the noose. If there was a person, I just saw that the the knot was cut as it was tightening. Mm, 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 mm. Speaking in tongues a little bit, raise up. I think this conversation set free many minds. 
and silence and subdue many evil voices. A lot of demons flying around. They were used by the devil. They have no idea. The Bible said, it, you know, they don't know what they're doing. No, what he's talking about. In time to clean up was a filth. It's death not in a sense. Chop people. Set the cat free, man. Hallelujah. Be free. No what? be free from yeah. human conventions. Human traditions. I'm not saying that disrespectfully, okay? Don't you be disrespectful. I'm saying allow your parents, respect elders, do your best to honor people. But never let the we in the world, or sometimes from the devil, to mesh and interfere, entangle, in one should destroy, and let the tree. You from the calling and the, 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 the destiny of God. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Make a stand. It's young man. You can. Sure. And you will, I believe. No. Every man of God has guts. Not human guts, not human foolishness. Amen. They always make a stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. I want you to pray for me. Bless me. I'm sorry to drag along. But... Lord, I bless my brother Emmanuel. Lord, I thank you for, Lord, the rod and the sword. Lord, sent directly from your throne that you have given him, Lord, to wield. Lord, against influences and powers that are not of your spirit, Lord, that directly oppose your spirit and way of life. Lord, I thank you today for that which you